Now that we've got our presets ready, let's build some cues. It's as simple as selecting some lights, placing them in some presets. Here we'll put them at full. We'll take our darts and fan them. We'll go ahead, get a little fancy with the grouping tools here. We'll grab our E2, do red, hit next, do violet. Very cool, I didn't get my grouping tool filter there. That's okay. Red first, next violet. That's what happens when you fat finger something. Now we've got a nice little look here. Go ahead and record this as a cue. Our default type, as we see here, is cue list. We'll talk about those in a minute. We'll give it a name. It is easiest to give it a name now, but you can do it later as well. Not a problem. And then we'll watch our, our work. Awesome. So now we see the lights fade in into the queue as expected. Now, you may have seen when we pressed record and then pressed one of our buttons, either here on the screen, on the top of the desk, or on a virtual playback page, that we have this pop-up. And in this pop-up, there are six different types of queue lists. There are actually seven, but one is slightly hidden. These types of queue lists are different ways that the fader will react uh, as we move a playback fader up and down. In other consoles, you might be familiar with changing the type of fader or changing a number of options as to how the fader works, and this is the same idea, just packaged in a different way. So the default type of cue list, which we just recorded, has when you press play, everything fades in. When we move the fader up and down, we're controlling only intensity. Other parameters like colors and pan tilt are not effective. Let's go ahead and change this fader as an example. I'm just going to double tap on it and hit this cog. Down the side here, I can change types to be able to show you what the different types of faders do. Second, we have timecode. This is a fader that accepts timecode values. By default, if I record it and hit play, move the fader, it works just like a regular cue list, but you can use the timecode options built into the NX2 in order to trigger this via timecode. Next, we have our chase. Now, a chase is going to require a second cue, um, and let's illustrate that now. So we've got our lights right here. I'll go ahead and select my darts again, bring them to full. This time we'll turn half of them to cyan, the other half to yellow. We'll record. Now we can press the same button again above the fader on the screen, or because it's selected and has the white box around it, we can just press enter. We'll go ahead and do a second color, third color scheme again. We'll hit full. This time let's go ahead, maybe we'll do green. Yeah, green looks nice, and magenta. Now, we'll record this as a third cue. Now, you may have seen before I record this that uh, I, every time in this chase I wanted to add a new cue, I hit the intensity at full again, even though it was already in my program. With Onyx, we have what are called active and inactive values. Active values are anything that we've worked with that we've touched since the last record. Anything that we had in our programmer from before we last hit record is made inactive because it's going to track through in the same cue list in most situations. But when we're working with chases or overrides that are cue blenders, tracking isn't enabled. And so we need to either touch the parameters again or just use the source active and inactive filter on the record pop-up and you'll be good to go. Now, I don't need that because I touched the parameters again, but it's a much quicker way than what I just showed you. Awesome. Now we've got that third cue. We'll go ahead and change this to a chase. And then we can see here our chase. So right now, it's not very exciting. We'll clear our programmer. We see the lights fade between in a chasing type format. Chases have some different options here in the cue list options screen. First, we have our timing. So if we press use timing here, we can now tap on the numbered key above it. We can go fast, of course. We can go slow. 
if we choose global rate, then the beat button, if you have maybe an NX touch on the side or set it to a function key, will determine the speed of the chase and you're able to tap all of the chases that have the global rate selected at the same time via the beat button. Next, we have the fade percent. If we select the fade percent and change that to zero, now it's a chase that just bumps between the cues. There's no fading. We were at 100% and when we were there, it was 100% fade. There was no pause between different cues. If we set it to 50%, we'll then see that we get a fade for half the time and then the other half of the time, it's paused. Okay, and so you can set that percentage how you like. Then we have forward, backward, and we have to restart it between. Bounce, which is front to back, cue number low to high, and then reverse, back and forth. And then random options. Random's just going to be random, which with three cues gives us a little something. That's a chase. We also have submasters. Now, a submaster, as you'll see as I change it here, is an intensity only cue. It's also a highest takes precedence, or HTP, type fader. And so that means it's going to control intensity. There's no need to press go or anything like that. It's automatically loaded. And whichever fader is the highest of multiple highest takes precedence, or mixed highest takes precedence and latest takes precedence faders, will get you the output to the stage. So submasters are great anytime you want to be able to additively add intensity to a group of lights. Inhibitive is the opposite of submaster. And so to show you that, I'll actually record a second cue. So I'm going to use my every two filter here and just take these lights at full. So now in my programmer, I'll see every other lights at full. Record that on a second fader. This one's going to be an inhibitive. Now, an inhibitive is like a reverse submaster. So I bring it up all the way, and it's going to subtract from the look on stage. So you can see here as this inhibitive subtracts the group that I selected, the, the half of the darts. You record at 100% or whatever maximum level you'd like, and then you can subtract from there. These are perfect for running your intensities or when you're working with video cameras and you just need to subtract from the value on stage on a case-by-case -case basis. Next in our options, we have the override. Now, the override is a special type of fader in Onyx. As we bring it up, we see that the fader fades in every type of parameter, okay? So we see here the intensity is fading with the fader, but so is the color that's recorded to this cue stack. So is the, uh, the uh, pan and tilt, everything, okay? Everything fades in, and in Onyx, that makes it exceptionally powerful because things like your effects speed can be recorded to a regular override type fader. There's no special effects settings, and it's going to control that effects speed, okay? Now we'll go ahead and uh, show you our cue blender since we're here. And a cue blender is when we toggle this option right here. And now, as we bring this fader up, we actually blend between the three cues, as you can see here. And so our three different cues here, in a non-tracking matter, change as we go up the fader. This means if you're comparing it maybe to other lighting consoles you've used before, there may have been cues or, or sequences that you use, different things that you mix together in a show, where you might need three, four faders to run some different positions or some different effects on a single group of lights. On a cue blender, you can stack that all in one fader, and now you've got more real estate for the rest of your cues. Cue blenders are also great for making builds of lights, um, as well as working with effects. Awesome. Those are the different cue list types. The override, the one other note on that is that it is a higher priority than other types of cue lists. This generally works great when you're running effects and things like that, so that it comes in, it overrides what's happening with the effect, and then you bring that back down and it goes away. Awesome. 
Now let's go ahead and talk about the other places we can record cues and record a few more cues. So on the NX2 surface, we've got our 10 non-motorized faders with a separate master. And so the first thing I usually do is lay out some intensities on these faders. So I'm just going to go ahead and press delete and press the button below my cue lists here. Perfect. And then I'm going to go ahead and press snap and release to actually release those cues from the console. OK, now we're starting from a blank slate again. First set of lights, we're going to build an intensity fader. I'm going to use the submaster here. Awesome. I forgot to name it, but that's OK. We can go back. Next set of lights, record. Now, I can just type and hit enter here. Because the submaster type is still selected. Whatever type we last recorded to remains selected for your next record. You can see the yellow box around it to indicate that. So if you're recording more than one cue list of the same type, which is pretty common to do, you can do it right there. Press Enter. We've got our floor lights. Then we've got our darts. Awesome. So now we've got some different faders here that we're able to mix together for our different lights on submasters. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and build some other faders. And so I'm going to go ahead here and I want to build some colors. And so in this example, I'm going to put colors on some playback buttons. Now on the NX2, we don't have physical playback buttons like the big brother of the NX4, but we can get to them on screen via the playback buttons page. So now I can just go ahead to my fixtures and presets, select my lights. Maybe I'll do a row of darts in every color. So I'm going to go darts here in red, cord right there. We're going to make these a regular cue list. Name it. Tap the regular cue list because it's the first one I'm doing. Green. Blue. We'll just keep going through and do all of these. As you probably notice, I fat fingered that magenta. We'll move it in a second. It moves just like anything else. Now clear twice. We'll just move, press the cue list, press where you want it to go. Done. Now that we've got some colors laid out for this fixture, I'll go ahead and lay out some different moving light positions. So I'm going to go ahead here. I like to do it in my next row, grab my darts. We just did three positions for the sake of time. Find our page while we're talking. We can't find anything. It's OK. I want to show you while we're here, a little time-saving tip here. You notice I was changing back and forth between the, the presets and the playback buttons a lot. And you know, when you have a single screen, that's something that you might have to do. But we can divide our screen up, too. It's actually really simple. Now, we have more in-depth guides to this in the Education Center on Alation's website. But we'll just pop in here, unlock our workspace, press Edit View. We've got a little four quadrant icon at the top. And here, I just want to do two columns. Then over on the, the right here, I'm going to add presets. I'm just going to add the regular presets window. I could do some strips. There's a lot of options. Then I'm going to grab this guy, my side to side here. We don't have a lot of presets in this show, so we'll make it pretty skinny. Oops, but I do lose the options there. That's how small I can get it and still see 
the different types. Save it with the save symbol at the top here. Press OK. And so now I can make presets even faster. Like, as an example, I was in here and I was going back and forth every time I selected a color or gobo. Now I don't have to do that. When you're done, as I mentioned, save. Back up here, lock your workspace, and you're done. Awesome. Now that we've recorded some basic cues, let's go ahead and talk about effects here in our next video.